Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I'll be doing another design video on the Kingdoms of Amalur The Reckoning um, which was just supposed to be called The Reckoning I think because the kingdom, Kingdoms of Amalur were supposed to be just the setting but not enough people bought it and here is a video trying to explain why they didn't and shouldn't have. Um, I picked this game up on Steam for a weekend sale like a couple of months back for I don't know five quid and I definitely got my money's worth but I wouldn't recommend anyone to buy it for full price but since I as usual have a bunch of video recorded um, I'm basically just going to jump straight into it um, and this game has the sort of standard um, RPG mistake of letting you pick something before you know what it's actually doing. Uh, so in this case you can get uh, bonuses to detect hidden or whatever and you really don't know how the skills work. Um, it does very well um, with teaching you about weapons and the different styles of weapons uh, but yeah here again you get like physical damage and armor which obviously sounds nice and you also get all of these sort of um, different phase settings and stuff that RPGs tend to have weirdly enough because you very rarely uh, pay attention to your character uh, or I don't because you just sort of run around seeing them from behind and seeing the armor um, so um, this game has the sort of weird mix between being um, an RPG and being sort of a single player uh, a single player RPG versus trying to become an MMO um, and as the game sort of pans out it will um, have different aspects of both of them and here I'm just skipping ahead a bit um, so this is basically the tutorial stage um, because the game has to teach you like a few different things it goes way overboard with sort of pausing the game to teach you about inventory and equipping things which I suppose most people would figure out but um, the different classes of weapons are actually important in this game um, I get a sword over here but yeah then once you've done with the sort of tutorial that's in an enclosed area you get out into the world and you, the sun is shining and everything is really pretty and you sort of get along um, so you level up here and you go into the skills I think I do yeah um, so every level you get one point to put into the uh, stats and here you can see the um, the skill bonuses I got from picking whatever class I picked um, and also all of these skills and in this case you can actually see what they're doing which I think would have been kinda kinda helpful on the screen back there um, because as you can see here it's a bunch of different skills and you can hover over the squares here to see what they're doing or the names to see what they're doing so you get one point into your uh, basic skills or your sort of professions I suppose they mostly uh, have to do with income and then here you have your extremely default uh, three different cl classes it's basically mage, warrior, rogue something like that which is um, yeah I suppose it's just the most basic RPG types you can think of um, you can also mix between the two but as you can see here uh, each level requires five skill points to put into it so um, to get to the higher skills you basically need a bunch of points in these lower ones um, and um, most of the basic skills here uh, so this one is a circle meaning it's a skill all of the square ones are passives and uh, the passives at the left here of all the trees are they basically boost just one type of weapon um, so if you're planning to go along with 
uh, playing a certain type of character and trying to go into the different skills, you're going to have a lot of unspent points into passive skills that you can't really do anything with at all, which is kind of weird to me because it basically means that if you choose something like this one, Scepter Mastery, um, and then you go into Might and you want to become sort of a fighter, so you uh, want to become tankier, you're still going to have to put points into something like um, Grand Sword Mastery or whatever it's called, Big Weapon Smashy skill. Um, so you're basically going to have to waste points. Meaning that even though it's an option to uh, sort of split between the trees, um, it's a kind of bad option. Um, I think I'm skipping in here. Run along, look at the inventory, or look at this guy here. And this is another problem with the camera, um, because you spend a huge amount of time just looking at the ground, basically. And the environments, as you can see here, this is like extremely tall forest. Um, if the trees were no higher than this one, sure, having a low camera looking at the ground would make a lot of sense. But in an environment that's built um, with a huge vertical um, part, the camera actually sort of destroys the scenery, at least for me. Um, I don't know. Like, compared to World of Warcraft, I think the camera is just a bit closer, as well as the default setting is sort of looking more down. Uh, because, as you might have guessed by now, this game looks an extreme amount like a more polished version of World of Warcraft. Um, which I really like. I played WoW for years, um, and this is just sort of a more polished version. Because they obviously get away with it, having fewer players and... Uh, fewer models on screen at one time. Um, but yeah, here. This is sort of another of the defining features, I suppose, um, which is um, basically bullet time, uh, only in an RPG. So once you fill your meter here, you go into a slow motion state where you can do damage, but enemies can also uh, damage you back. And once you sort of knock them out, you won't have to, um, they won't fight you until you sort of run out of meter. Um, and then once you, once you get all of them down, you get to perform a combo, um, which is basically just sort of a cinematic bit. And then you get to spam the spacebar button or one button randomly. I think there's, I don't know, four different ones. It's mouse one, mouse two, space and Q, something like that. And as you all know, I hate these spam the button um, sort of mini games. Uh, the problem with this game is that, as you can see here, you actually get more XP for killing an enemy with the spam mini game, um, which I find mind-boggling uh, for two reasons. One, because I hate the spamming, obviously, uh, because spamming a button is not gameplay. Um, and secondly, because you get more XP for killing something with um, with this ability um, and then also bosses giving you more XP you tend to save this ability not for cases when you're actually hurt but rather when you're basically done with a fight just because you want the 100% extra XP for um, for killing the boss with the ability um, and there was also a bit of talking which uh, I suppose is the only place where uh, where you actually see your character. Um, and the sort of layout of the areas is actually extremely good. Um, it's as you'd expect from an MMO. Uh, basically it's sort of your starting area and then you have a sort of enclosed area that you nearly have to run through. Um, basically because you want to see the quest markers on your minimap. Um, so you're led through these areas, and then once you've picked up your quests, um, the area sort of uh, expands, allowing you to run to the different parts of the map to um, to pick up the 
uh, or to finish the quests basically. Um, in this case you can also see another problem with um, with multi-classing or whatever you want to call it because every uh, equipment in the game um, maybe not all of it say 1% might be different uh, but all the rest of them require only one stat to equip so in this case I got something with I don't know I suppose it's some sort of um, deluxe version thingamajig uh, special content I suppose um, which requires 3 might um, I think the highest is up to something like 60 and let's say I got 80 skill points on a, on a playthrough meaning you only have something like 20 points to put into the other skills um, and basically just the starting passives um, so you run around you pick up your quests and this is also another problem because of uh, how simple the quests are and um, basically the as you can see here there are waypoint markers on your minimap the yellow one is your current active quest um, the white ones are active quests but not your main one like your tracking one on the side uh, which is the yellow one um, so basically what you tend to do, or what I tend to do, is just run towards the markers because all of the animals uh, up in the, um, the sort of main world or overworld, or whatever you want to call it, um, they're, it's basically pointless killing them. Um, in this case, I have picked up the uh, detect hidden skill, which means I can see treasures on the minimap, meaning that there's really no point in exploring at all and there's also really no point in killing um, any sort of these basic monsters uh, in this case I'm using a wand which is basically auto aim and also launches you backwards um, so if you charge it it um, it launches you backwards and otherwise you can just spam the button and it uses your mana and uh, you can sort of cast them uh, really really quickly I, th I suppose it's as fast as you can click the button. Um, but yeah, back to the quests. So the overworld is kind of pointless, uh, except in this case I actually have a sort of escort quest. And this is also the first quest because it shows the sort of fast travel thingy. Um, the tutorial system is also kind of weird in that um, you can't it's not the same button every time for uh, getting rid of text uh, boxes in some cases you have to in this case you had to click M you had to click enter and then you had to click escape to go back and then you can click space to get rid of the next text button uh, so it's kind of weird like that skipping dialogue is space um, so you'd think you could use it to sort of delete stuff if you've played the game before but you can't um, and this is also just another example of pretty cool design in my opinion um, it's just basically an obvious trap uh, but I suppose most people would go for it either way I actually haven't tried running past it to see what happened but in this case you run on a trigger and monster spawn yay um, I think it's just sort of a piece of cool design and there's another one later in the this same dungeon which is basically just sort of a trophy on a pillar and then if you just run on top of it uh, you will get trapped and take a bit of damage um, in this case I'm actually just playing the game on easy uh, I played it for the first I don't know four hours maybe on hard but the only difference uh, the sort of difficulty settings uh, make is that you tend to spam more health pots uh, meaning you have to go back to town more to buy health pots because um, using pots is just a hotkey E is for mana R is for health and you can spam them as often as you like they take no time to use and they um, heal you up the full amount uh, instantly so in every fight um, you can just spam pots and you win basically so um, the combat is 
Um, I don't know how to put this really, but sort of, it's hard to find what part of the game that's supposed to be the center, because the combat is extremely simple. There's a stealth system that works, but it's optional, so it can't be the center. All of the quests are extremely simple. Um, the main story, I suppose, is good, but you can't really sell a game on its story. And so if you have simple quests, simple fighting, and just sort of a super smooth um, system that helps you do every quest, um, I really don't know what the challenge is. Because enemies having more health, meaning you use more health pots, is not a challenge. It's just about finding more money to buy more pots. Um, so you really, ha you can really play through this game having no challenge, just to sort of explore it, I suppose. Um, like, I played it through to the end, so it must have some good aspect, but I think it might just be um, the graphics, or just the sort of exploring the world part, because I really can't say what made me play this game, because it's just so simple in every single way. Um, but yeah, in this case, I'm just keep doing the same quest. You escort a guy to a place, you kill everything in the place, you pick up the, the thingy, you escort the guy back to town, uh, you get experience, I suppose. Um, so this is basically every quest in the game. I actually managed to find a quest that... Um, or you could do that in this case as well. So you can choose to give the item to the guys and not fight them. Or you can just fight them and take the thingy. But I haven't found uh, a single place in the game where not just taking the item is the better choice. Because I've never ran into um, the same guy again. Um, so I kind of have it, uh, haven't really figured out why you would ever choose that bit. Um, so the game just wants you to kill everything, I suppose. This is also a weird bit, because if you talk to him, he just says, I want to get back to town. And then you uh, sort of run around wondering what you want to do, or what you should do. And then and eventually another guy walks past and uh, sort of finishes the quest. So, um, let's see, see here. Um, so this is just the shopping system, which is fair enough, I suppose. Um, you can, in most cases, buy something that is better than what you are currently got from um, from quests. Like in this case, you can see this costs 4.2k, I have 3.1. Um, so the amount something costs is sort of a fair, um, fair example of how items work. And um, this game tends to use what I want to call Excel loot. It's just basically stats. Like on this level for this price you get this randomized item. And I'm not sure, but I think that all of the green and blue items are random and purple and yellow are fixed or something like that. Uh, meaning that uh, sure in the shop some items will be the same. Uh, maybe all quest rewards are the same. I actually don't know. Um, but you will tend to get a bunch of items that aren't really useful. Uh, but then you also have these backpacks. As you can see here, I have an inventory li limit of 18 out of 70. A backpack adds 10 to this, and there are only a handful of backpacks in the game. I think I managed to find 5 uh, when I finished the game. But the you will tend to run into the limit um, if you just pick up everything like you tend to do in the when you're just starting out a game. Um, and everything takes up one slot, so like a great great sword takes up one slot and um, I think uh, each type of these uh, consumables also takes up one slot. Um, so no matter how many you have in the stack, it's still just one slot, except for health pots, which can only be, I don't know, 10 or 20. Um, so you will want to buy all the backpacks in the game that you find, um, which tends to be sort of the biggest money sink in the beginning. 
Um, but yeah, shopping. I mean, it works. It's better than Skyrim, I suppose. Because you can actually use your mouse for something useful. Um, but yeah, the game is absolutely beautiful. And I think, just like uh, Bioshock Infinite, for instance, the graphics are the, better, the best part of this game. Um, it's obviously World of Warcraft inspired. Uh, but it has a bunch of different settings and uh, you're just sort of running around exploring and I probably shouldn't say World of Warcraft inspired bit because obviously that game was inspired by lots of other games but still um, another thing there is fast travel in this game which is obviously massively helpful and since you can um, fast travel back to sort of any location except from indoors um, and a few different areas I suppose like quest areas um, you have a really easy time of getting around the world um, even though the game is um, like as usual when you don't have a jump button and you can't really sort of uh, get across the rain it means you will tend to get stuck on sort of weird places. Like in this case, I just want to go over there, but nope. Um, but yeah, the graphics. They are, in my opinion, excellent. And it's very rare that you come across uh, stuff like that looks uh, repetitive, I suppose. Like even when you look on these uh, sort of cliffs, sure, they have a sort of basic texture, but they just tend to sort of blend nicely and there's a lot of detail um, so yeah I just enjoy the game um, and here's another part um, that's uh, both cool and sort of weird um, you can't really see it here because um, I'm just sort of using the skills but inside of this uh, sort of uh, icon here there's a yellow um, there's a yellow line on both number three and number five uh, and there's a gray bit of my mana bar here meaning that these are uh, sort of toggleable skills or sustained skills uh, meaning that you can have them on all the time and they won't drain your mana instead they will uh, reduce your maximum mana which I think is a pretty cool idea but it also means that there's much fewer skills that you're going to use in combat because in this case this character is pretty much max level has all of the skills um, and this one is even from the uh, might tree so the warrior tree meaning that the rogue has uh, sure there are traps as well which I didn't pick but I have this skill which throws a bunch of daggers and if you're close to something big it does bunch of damage because all the daggers hit him otherwise not so much and this one makes me go invisible every I don't know 30 seconds or something it has a quite long uh, recharge timer um, I think I'm just showing off some skills here yeah as you can see 88 points um, this is my uh, blade honing skill and yeah so sustained cost of 15% mana uh, and there's also the poison one uh, somewhere else but here is basically combat you run up to something that was my first skill but you have to click it twice to throw the daggers but yeah then you sort of roll around so we have a dodge move you have a block move everyone can use shields um, and then you just spam your mouse button uh, that's basically it uh, so the entirety of combat is using health pots, using a skill every 10 or 15 seconds maybe, and the rest of the time uh, clicking your mouse button. So, uh, yeah. Um, the next step is your, uh, I don't know, your crafting, I suppose. And all of these tend to uh, sort of be different ways of making more money. Alchemy alchemy whatever uh, you can make health pots so you don't have to buy them blacksmithing you can repair your stuff so you don't have to buy or you don't have to pay for repairs 
and you can make your own items so you don't have to buy them. Detect hidden, you find chests and you get more uh, gold. Dispelling, you can open chests with wards. Lock picking, you can open chests with locks. Mercantile, you can uh, make more money buying and selling. Presentation, you can tell people to <laughs> give you money. Um, Sagecraft is crafting gems, which you can put in sockets on certain items. And stealth. Um, stealth, obviously, is the one that has least to do with money, but since you can kill enemies um, basically out of combat, you can one-shot enemies, a lot of them, with daggers. This means you won't have to use health bots and you won't have to repair your stuff because you won't take any damage. So, eh, that one is a bit uh, tenuous, I suppose, but in one way it's um, it has to do with money. So here, yeah, you recover money when you destroy it and improves buying and selling. Um, destroying items is actually extremely rare, uh, at least for me, which is probably why I had problems with uh, inventory management. But yeah, here are the, a few of them. I will, I think the next one is actually, no, sorry. I thought it was uh, dispelling and lockpicking, but that one is later. Um, I'm just going to sort of run along and pause if I uh, come up with something. But yeah, here's just another example of combat with the daggers. Uh, so you do just sort of a bunch of combos using your mouse, um, sort of mouse one. Um, the enemies are actually kind of cool. Um, they have a few special moves, like these guys. Um, they can, as you can see here, he kicks up an ice ball and he launches it at you, and then you, they have the sort of charging maneuver. And then they also have that swing. And because I'm using daggers, uh, I have a hard time sort of stunning them out of their attacks because I swing so... Uh, I swing quickly but not hard. Uh, and the weapon system is... Uh, it's pretty cool. Basically what it means is that different types of weapons give you different options. Uh, I'm going to put on something else here. Um, so there are daggers and fey blades, which are the sort of rogue weapons. Daggers give you really, really good uh, backstab attacks. Fey blades are more for uh, sort of AOE. They do spinny thingies. Um, and you also have your bows. And as you can see here, you have arrows, meaning you can only shoot this many times before the arrows have to replenish. Now I have extra skills in the rogue tree, meaning I shoot arrows everywhere. Um, but most of the classes have something like this. Um, I suppose both the warrior and the rogue use bows, and then the wizards use the ones you saw before. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, the fey blades do sort of more spinny attacks, but they also have... Um, they work better at stunning opponents, but they're not super amazing at it. Oh, pew pew pew, shoot some arrows. Spin some swords, win game. Um, then there are long swords, which are... Oh yeah, here's my other skill, uh, which makes you invisible. And as you can see here, the recharge timer on that is really long. And there's a backstab, doing 2.4k damage. The daggers can actually do upwards of 20,000 damage. Uh, so they're pretty good. Um, and then I will change to different weapons again. Um, swords, a long sword, and then a great sword, I think. Um, yeah. So basically, a long sword is uh, somewhere in between the great sword and the daggers, and the great sword is sort of a really slow weapon that easily stuns enemies and that swings sort of crazily around you. Um, I don't know if the DPS actually differs between any um, like weapons of similar um, similar quality. Um, if sort of great sword do, does more damage, if you can just swing it than a dagger does, for instance. So here's the lock picking skill. Basically, you just try to find the angle, and the harder the lock, the lock gets, the faster your lock pick snaps. Um, so it's pretty easy. Uh, and in this case, this is 
a long sword. And that's another special attack. So he just sort of swings it back and forth. He swings his hair back and forth. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, here I'm switching to the great sword. So as you can see, he's basically being stunned and knocked back every single hit, um, which is obviously better against uh, sort of tough uh, creatures than it is against really tiny ones. And here is blacksmithing. Basically what you do is you destroy items instead of selling them and then you can craft items. So first you select your category. Um, there is mage armor, rogue armor, warrior armor and weapons. Um, so first you select the blade and you will also always want to choose the best one. Then you can choose um, sort of different components. As you can see here there are four different components and for each one I have a bunch of different options because well, you, you rarely have to make new weapons. If you always use your best components for crafting, you won't have to make a new one for, you know, 10 levels at least. And for 10 levels you get probably uh, several hundred item drops that you can break down. Uh, but to get a component, like to get a hilt, you have to destroy a weapon um, that has a hilt. Like if you destroy a staff, I don't think you get a hilt. And I don't think you get a blade either. Um, so you get different components depending on the items you destroy, meaning that you have to sort of destroy an item that would be decent for you to get components for an item that would be great, uh, hopefully. So as you can see here, the, there are different uh, different types, giving you different bonuses. Some do damage, some is regen, some is straight health, uh, life steal, uh, different types of damage. Um, so in this case I make a sword that does a lot of uh, fire damage. Um, and the elements in this game, um, there are like fire, cold, lightning, the standard ones. I haven't seen any difference. Um, but yeah. Uh, so my last sword had an 88 damage rating or whatever. I don't know what this means actually. And this has 200. so. You can craft some pretty good stuff if you're a high level uh, blacksmith. And this is a fate weaver, meaning you can uh, pay money to respec basically. And as you can see here, I've done it once, meaning it costs uh, 8000. It goes up to twice the cost every time you do it, but I have 670,000 gold. Um, so you can do 8, 16, 32, 64. Uh, one, two, eight, two, five, six. Uh, yeah. So that's at least like six times. I don't know. And then you can also make um, pots. So if you do it five times and then the last time you become a alchemist, you can make pots. I think that um, that boosts your skills or that resets your skills. And in this case, I actually have. Um, you find sort of books and you can also train your skills, uh, you can pay to train them, uh, meaning I don't have to start from uh, one, instead I can start from my current level that I have with the books and such. Uh, but yeah, you just respect all your skills and then in this case I'm going for uh, might instead. So as you can see here there are really few skills that are that you can activate. So it's this one, one, two, three, four, five skills. It's the maximum you can have in a tree. Um, so, yeah, it's not. I would say it's not Diablo, but the last one you can only have six skills. I think uh, in Diablo two, I had, you know, the standard eight skills bound, and if we're in, the, in World of Warcraft, you had. Uh, tons and tons. You had your like your standard ten. Then you had one with pots and one with consumables, one with macros. Um, so this game is really simple, uh, but you should also also not compare it to something like uh, World of Warcraft, which is obviously pretty complicated skill-wise, even though it's basically just don't stand in fire. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah. So here I've specced into great swords instead. And in this case, I will actually say it didn't really help. But eh, just showing you off some skills. Um, a bunch of them are passive as well. And since I haven't used this, uh, I just sort of jumping in and doing some random stuff. Screaming and jumping and whatever. So yeah, if you find this game for something like 5 or 10 bucks, um, there will obviously be a summer sale on Steam this year as well. Um, if you like something like Skyrim um, or a really simple version, something like Fable, um, check it out. Um, if you don't like, like really like the World of Warcraft style and sort of running around doing fetch quests, you probably won't like this game at all. Um, so it's kind of a weird recommendation for the really hardcore RPG people. Because the story is pretty nice, the graphics are amazing, but the gameplay is just too simple to really be satisfying. And it also runs into the problem. Uh, I should have drawn this slide, but I haven't. Um, because, uh, let's see here, I'm just going to do a super quick one. Brush, black. Uh, there's sort of a basic design pattern saying that uh, you start down here. Whoops, not like that. And then you do sort of a diagonal line. And this is basically as damage goes up, you want the enemy's health to stay within a certain spectrum, um, giving you flow. Like the game should be decently balanced to give you flow, uh, uh, stuff like that. Um, so the problem with the game is that if it never... Um, let's say you find a good item and you will sort of go above the line here. And then as you um, as you don't switch out any gear, you will eventually drift off into sort of the difficult part. The problem is that the gear never changes the way you play, so the game is just too simple to really have any sort of lasting appeal. Um, basically, if I could have played it and just one shot any, every enemy, I think I would have the same amount of fun. Um, and that's just not good enough. So I realized uh, this game needed to sell like three or four million copies to break even and I really see why it didn't. Um, so a weird recommendation if you're a hardcore RPG fan but there are really much better games to play and I would probably say um, going back to Skyrim is a better, better option. The only reason I played this game was actually because it was on sale a weekend when I had a bunch of time off and um, I didn't want to go back into Skyrim because I'd already finished it. So there we have it, a really really long video of me talking about an old game that no one cares about anymore. <laughs> Something like that. Thanks for watching if you actually reached the end.